What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. Coming at you with a new review. This is an indie book, Dragon Hoops, by Jean Wen Yang. Hope I pronounced that right. Sorry if I didn't. Um, and this is pretty interesting. So this guy uh, has, I guess, a, a history of writing graphic novels uh, as a cartoonist and all that. Um, American Born Chinese is one of his, uh, is, was his first one. Um, and then I know he's best known for Boxers and Saints, and I know uh, some friends have, have really spoken very highly of his work. So he's got a, um, and he's been picked up recently to do Last Airbender and Superman and stuff. So uh, on his way up, I don't know who published this. I guess it's not even, that, maybe it's not that indie of a book. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but uh, I was in my comic shop the other day, and this is there. And uh, this is actually kind of a local story, so I was interested in that from that perspective because um, it's about a local basketball team uh, at Bishop O'Dowd, which is uh, in Oakland, California, uh, kind of my area here. And it actually features, uh, you know, uh, stuff like De La Salle High School and stuff like that, which is really close by to me. So I was very interested in that on the local level and uh, just from the human interest story level because uh, it's about, you know, a comic nerd, him, who kind of gets involved with like really competitive high school basketball, like like nationwide competitive level. And so he uh, actually writes it from a perspective of himself. He's actually in here, this is him. And uh, he's hanging with his people and with his wife and with, uh, he's a school teacher at this school in addition to um, his other stuff. And this is just his family talking here. Um, and he starts to think about basketball and, uh, you know, his life and comics and, you know, how it works for other people and how, how the jocks and the nerds kind of split differently, even at, even at the teacher level, like you got the PE teachers were, you know, sitting together and kind of the nerdier teachers sitting together, uh, in the cafeteria. Uh, and he wanted to just kind of like, you know, move over and kind of like, I guess, humanize everybody and, and kind of break the ice. And so that's where he started with this. And so he started doing interviews of this guy, Coach Lou, uh, who's in here, and uh, then started following this basketball team around as they, um, got their like superstars and like were on their way to the championship, basically. And uh, very well constructed narrative. Uh, there's a lot of personal stuff, so you you get the background where he's he's actually cartooning. There's like a fourth wall kind of break where he's cartooning and talking about like making the book and like, you know, talking to his wife about like, you know, how, I don't even know how this book's going to turn out. Like, what, how can I be doing this graphic novel? You know, we don't even know if they're going to win the championship. Wouldn't that suck if they lost the championship? And then I was writing the book and, um, his wife, like throughout the book is kind of just like encouraging him and, uh, you know, being like, you know, you gotta, you, you've got the story, you just do the story. And then how it turns out is, is what's real. So do it. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I really liked it frankly, all of the characters in the story. And that was pretty neat. And um, that's, uh, and it just follows basketball. I mean, so I like the cartooning. He did a great job. I actually cared about the basketball cartooning. I'd probably read a basketball comic book. I won't lie. Um, pretty cool by itself. Um, I'd read a baseball comic book. That'd be neat. Um, and it just goes through, goes through, goes through. And you, you kind of learned about him, his background, some of these, uh, some of these different guys, these are like the two main stars, the point guard and then their, their big tall guy. Um, and he has a couple cute things like, you know, look, on paper, they're the same. African-American basketball prodigy, uh, raised in Oakland by a single mother. But look at them. <laughs> they're very different uh, uh, heights and et cetera. So it's very, very interesting stuff. Lots of, uh, lots of that type of stuff where it's like, you know, you, you can't really categorize people. And, uh, and I think that's kind of his, uh, his messaging all around. Uh, and this is the whole team. And he goes through and he talks about some individuals and, and all that. And he really goes through the, the political dynamics of like freshmen versus seniors and, uh, and, and the political dynamics of the coaching as they kind of progress through their season. They have ups and downs, wins and losses, very interesting stuff all the way around. They go, uh, he goes into basketball history is another neat thing. Uh, he, he talks about, uh, these, uh, these past players and like how basketball was invented. So if you, you really aren't familiar with the sport or whatever, you get a really good, like academic look at it, which is pretty neat. 
um, and it's it's all pretty good all the way around on that level. So yeah, this is actually the first women's basketball that he actually talked about how that was uh, designed and done, which was which was just kind of fun. Um, and Bishop O'Dad has a really good women's basketball program too. I guess uh, you know they're they're consistently a championship team, which is pretty neat. And that uh, that that is influenced because one of the players, uh, his uh, sister was like the star uh, women's basketball player, so he he had to kind of live in her shadow, which is an odd dynamic uh, to grow up with for sure. Um, I don't know. There, there's a big deal about uh, spoiling the ending of, of what happens kind of towards the end of it. So I'm not going to do that for you guys because this is a brand new book. It's not like an old one that I've reviewed before. Uh, but it's fun on that level. Um, yeah, this was a really fun one. <laughs> fun little sequence. I really like it. Uh, some some really good cartooning in here. Uh, very good humanization and uh, of everything, including just even just sports concepts. Uh, and the characters, like, I mean, he does it, he dials in just different people's personalities and the way they talk and all that, which is, which is another great thing about this. Um, so that is this book. It's 450 pages long. I read it in one night. I couldn't put it down. So pretty gripping for, I mean, think about it. I mean, the, the guy took like a slice of life, uh, of high school basketball and made it interesting enough that I, I read 450 pages in one night. So that's, uh, that is a testament to that work. Now I'm going to get to the, the bad part. Um, so there, this is not a perfect book by any means. Uh, the author, uh, Yang here seems to ha like be really hung up on just racism and seeing racism where there isn't necessarily racism. Um, to the point where like, I mean, it, it's a part of every section of the book that he actually has panels, uh, when he's going over the history of basketball, where it's like, it's, it's like, it's, it's like a gang of white people. And uh, this is not one of those panels. This is talking about, uh, this is a funny portion of, of different part, but it's grown white people like this. And it's all like them saying like, black people can't do this or Chinese people can't do this or women can't do this. And it's like, well, that's his editorial that, you know, um, and he wants to see this like oppressive racism everywhere. And it's not, it's not really there. Um, now he exemplifies this by moments where he sat in the stands and heard people uh, you know, uh, shouting at like the Indian player or shouting at the Chinese player or whatever. Uh, now heckling is a part of sports and you know, it's not whether and, and the, the kids actually, he's got a scene in this, which is actually like really telling the kid goes, it's not because of race or anything like that. They're just, they're just heckling because they're the other team and that's what you do. And it's just part of the culture. And that's very true about sports. Uh, if, if they were white people, they would get heckled with really angry, uh, stuff like that. Also, it just, you know, they, it really doesn't matter what the content is that they're just trying to throw the basketball players off. And that's what they're trying to do uh, from the crowd perspective. We did this at UC Berkeley. Um, when I was uh, there, our team was actually pretty good. Uh, we uh, made the NCAA tournament second round that year actually went, I uh, flew to Dallas with, uh, with the basketball team and did that. That was really fun. Um, and there was a player on UCLA um, and we got his Facebook account uh, as the, like, sort of, you know, the, the uh, students and made a fake Facebook account uh, with, with the name Victoria. And we put this, like, we put a picture of just this beautiful girl on there and just started chatting him up uh, from there. And so then we circulated before the game uh, the entire text uh, that he was sending, which he got a little bit dirty with this Victoria, which was not a real person, didn't know it. Uh, and it was all about, we're going to meet up after the game. We're going to, you know, do this and this and this. And it's this guy who's traveling. He's, he, you know, he's a hot shot basketball player. So he thinks he's hot shit. And, uh, he, uh, and it, it circulated around all the student section. So, so we had this whole like pa printout paper of his texts, uh, with this fake person, about how he's gonna go banger after the basketball game or whatever. And so every time the guy went to the free throw line, the entire student section would chant Victoria, Victoria, Victoria at the guy. And he turned so bright red, he just panicked, he missed all of his shots. And it's it's pretty mean if you think about doing that. That is so mean. Uh, but, uh, it is part of, it is just part of the, you know, fan culture, especially like with college and, and teenagers, you know, it's a very immature level of it. Um, and so there's not really, there's not racism there. Uh, it is just, it is just part of the heckle culture and he just wanted, he, he wanted to push it in that direction and looking at his other work, 
he seems to have a hang up about that uh, and really like really wants to see this like oppressive racism. So his Superman book is actually titled Superman versus the Klan. Um, and you know, there's no, there's no clan really, you know, so there's no, there's no groups of, of white hooded white people going around beating up black people that Superman needs to deal with. So, you know, I mean, for, for writing that in 2020 is, it's kind of silly. Um, and that's, that's this guy's hang up. So know that that's in there and he goes into it probably, you know, once every hundred pages, there's something about that, you know, so there's, there's four or five of them and it does it it does like distract from the book and slow down the book where it, it was totally unnecessary you take that out of there and you have a beautiful beautiful like just uh uh very very nice uh uh heartwarming story pretty much out of this uh both from his personal life perspective where by the way you know i mean you want to talk about you know racism or whatever it's it's reverse at this point uh if if, if he thinks that he's getting New York Times uh, publishing contracts about cartooning basketball for high school, and if he was white, I mean, would would he would that exist? I don't know. Um, that's something to think about. Would he would he have a Superman contract? I don't know. Um, I, it seems like the companies are are very much doing the reverse these days. Uh, but that's a that's a that's a story for another video. But yeah, it's it's it bogs down the book a little bit, um, and it, it's it's frankly pretty perfect without that. Um, very very good. Like I said, uh, cartooning, the pacing's amazing. Um, you know, I actually don't mind this uh, this cartoony style of art whatsoever. Um, it kind of reminds me of that Scott Pilgrim deal. I'm glad it's in color, that made me happy. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed the story about uh, Bishop O'Dowd basketball all the way around. So uh, barring that part, uh, I'm gonna call this like an eight out of 10, because it could have been a 10 out of 10 pretty easily. Uh, but it, uh, you know, it, it just had that, those, those parts, which just kind of get annoying, uh, rather than actually have much of a point to them. And it, it just, just feels a little signally. So that's it. Dragon Hoops by Jean Luen Yang. And, uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, definitely. I like it. I like supporting, uh, arty random projects like this, especially local. That's pretty cool. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the review. Like and subscribe, everybody. Leave your comments down below uh, and uh, let me know if you pick this up. See ya.